Welcome to the Belmont Middle and High School video update. I'm Diane Miller and I'm here today with Bill Lavallo, Chair of our Committee, and with John Phelan, Superintendent of Schools. And we are standing in what will eventually be the middle school. It's currently a construction site. Um, but hence we're our equipment. <laughs> hence the equipment, but we're here to talk about uh, the high school and the middle school as well as impacts on some of the other uh, younger kids. Well, I'll start by saying I'm excited. We're one week away from opening the um, high school to the second year. Last year was our first year, successful first year. This past summer, we did all the little punch list items, finishing up the little things that didn't get done in time to open last year, and we're done, and it's complete. And as you say, we're standing on the other side of the temporary partition, a construction site. You can see all around me, uh, masonry going on behind here. We've got fields being built. We've got drywall going up. We're actually in the media center for the 7th and 8th. So this is the 7th and 8th Media Center, the middle school wing. Uh, Media, Media Center, Center is a library. library. <laughs> New terms, and we used to go to the library. Yes. Um, so it's pretty exciting. You know, we get the glass in, uh, bright space. It's what we see throughout in the new school phase uh, one, the high school, and we see it in the middle school. So I'm pretty excited. So first of all, last year when we opened up for the high school students, it was amazing to walk through the building and see all the characteristics of that new high school that the students asked for several years ago. So I want to remind folks who haven't been in the new high school yet that the phase one side, uh, the, the items that students asked for, the teachers asked for, the community asked for, were in that phase one. Uh, it's complete now to Bill's point, and we're really excited about being here in the seventh and eighth grade side to start that work of melding the two schools uh, to one school and bringing seventh and eighth grade up here in September of 23 and connecting the schools to seven through 12 school on Concord Ave. Um, and what we talked about a long time ago, Bill and Diane, is how we have thoughtful connections that we can have between the 7th and 8th grade and the 9th through 12th side, but also very careful separations. And I think it's important for our families to know that if you have a 7th grader coming up in September of 23, what will, what will their day look like? How will they navigate the building? And you should be rest assured that they will walk into a school that may have 2,000 students, but they'll quickly go into a middle school where they only have 625 students then they'll go to a grade floor like this and have only 325 students. And then they'll be part of a team where they'll only be one of 100. And so their school experience has really been intimate, close uh, and experiencing for them and for their teachers. And the student will walk away with a real intimate experience of what middle school looks like. Because this is a middle school wing in a larger building and they will be here for five sevenths of their day. So five periods will be in this middle school wing and they'll go out to um, music, they'll go out to physical education. So we will share some spaces with the high school. Um, but John, like, let, me, let me just say, you know, they go to the music, they have their own band room. That's correct. They go to uh, Art. Phys Ed, they have their own locker room. That's correct. There's a, there's a small gym that might be uh, more programmed for their use. Correct. Art, they have their own art classes. So it's still those uh, thoughtful separations, I say that right? Or so careful separations. Careful separations yeah. and thoughtful, <laughs> thoughtful connections. Connection, so the right. connection right. is they get to use the auditorium and they get to use the brand new field house, but they have their own locker room. They get and the they best of their both own worlds. And they get the both, best of both worlds. They have their own nurses uh, suite here. They have their own administration walking in. They have their own library. Correct. Uh, so this is, seven, this is a seventh This is a seventh school. So this will be like the seventh school of the district. So the nine through 12 school will have its own principal, Isaac Taylor. And then the seventh and eighth grade wing will have their own principal and their own administration, their own school nurse. So it will be for our middle schoolers very similar uh, and actually more um, middle school like this model of this building is really what a middle school should look like. And we're so fortunate in these children now. So that those are the careful separations, the thoughtful connections are access to certain spaces that they can use. But also when we thought about this five or six years ago, Bill and our visioning that we did for five, seven days with community members and staff and and students was they wanted to connect seventh and high school a little bit through curriculum. So our curriculum leaders get to come into one building and connect with all the teachers. So the teachers who are teaching seventh and eighth grade are also connecting with the teachers who are in 
10th, 11th, and 12th. So our English educators, our social studies educators, they'll all be talking about the 7 through 12 environment and this curriculum articulation that will benefit the students. Remember when you were in eighth grade and you had to go up to ninth grade, you had to change your building, the school was different, the curriculum felt, dif felt different. This new transition for our students in a seven through 12 school has really flattened out that challenge and it will be a, an amazing uh, and calm and uh, curriculum appropriate and experience for students to walk in from a seventh and eighth grade experience to their high school experience. A little more seamless of a Absolutely, transition. Absolutely, no doubt. And about. I have people talking about, and we do this, we talk about phase one high school, phase two middle school, but it's one building. And, right. and I think some of our messaging gets, gets a little right. lost there because they think there's two buildings, but it's one, you walk in the first floor when it's done, you just see the seamless connection. Correct. And, and that ability to flow, but the same ability, they have their own stair, by the way, for communication, right? Correct. So they have those uh, those sort of uh, barriers or boundaries that allow them to still be middle schoolers. So the boundaries are physical, like walls and access points and doors, and they're also there for, for, for wayfinding. So the colors in the middle school are different than the we colors looked at in them today. School. We looked at right. them today. So you know where you are based on the color of your, your wing or your classroom or your team area. And the uh, scale of the space, too, feels a little bit smaller and a little correct. bit more intimate in the middle school side. It's only a three-story building versus the high school that's side. Correct. It's four stories. It's a, it's a lot smaller experience, and it's meant to be that way for mm -hmm. our 70th graders. And one thing I'd like to point out that's not school-related but community-related is that we have special access to the field house, the small gym, and the pool that's uh, meant for community use. So after hours, uh, our recreation director can open the door and the doors are, are, are locked to the remainder of the high school and they can walk right in and use the pool. They can use the large field house, they can use the gym. We have a lot of great community assets here that we want the community to be able to use. And the building was designed with the whole town and the whole community in mind. And so that's another very uh, attractive characteristic of this building. It's great for our school, it's great for 7 through 12, it's great for the town. Uh, students, but it's also great for the community of adults that use all the park and recreation programs uh, in Belmont. So let's talk for a moment about the impacts on the younger kids because mm -hmm. obviously once we move seventh and eighth graders here into this building, mm -hmm. that's going to have sort of a trickle down effect right on the sixth grade and younger. Correct. So do you want to walk us and our viewers through what that impact is going to be for the younger kids out there? Sure. So uh, today is August 30th, 2022. Uh, Yesterday, August 29th, 2022, I sent out a newsletter that kind of described that timeline. So uh, this year, the high school will remain here in this building in their phase. It's complete, as Bill described. In September of 23, our seventh and eighth grade students will move into this location that we're standing in, and that will become the first year of the seventh through 12th school. September of 23 and through the uh, spring of 24, when the seventh grade and eighth grade are here for the first time, we leave the Chenery middle school as just a grade five and grade six school. And we left it For one that year. way because we wanted to leave that transition year. Just in case some of the construction didn't go on time, we only wanted to have one big move at a time. So the big move in the summer of 23 will be moving seventh and eighth grade up. The big move in, in, in the summer of 24 will be moving our fourth graders from the elementary school to the what we will call the Chenery Upper Elementary School that will host our grade four, five, and six students. So then we become a district that has primary schools, which are the Butler, the Winbrook, the Burbank, and the Wellington, K to three, again, smaller buildings, smaller class sizes, smaller um, uh, enrollment, but more space to grow programming. Wouldn't it great to be, have a STEM room in an elementary school? Wouldn't it great to be able to use some of that space for excellent programming for our elementary students? The upper elementary school at Chenery will just have three grades, four, five, and six, and it used to have four grades. So that inherently comes with capacity and space to create different programming for our community and our schools within that building. So this one project that we were able to design, thankfully with help from the citizens who afforded us this, um, this money to do this building project, uh, really solves the capacity problem that we had before COVID, which was we had a lot of students coming in, all of our schools were overcrowded. We've had modular classrooms behind the high school, behind the Burbank and behind the Chenery that will all come down. And now we have an asset in the town for the next 50 years that has great capacity that will solve all of these enrollment issues now and moving forward with beautiful space to create programming in each grade level mm -hmm. of the district, which is really, really uh, a, a real you know, amazing outcome. Through one project. One project. One project. For, and and uh, just to uh, wrap up that thought, uh, we have to acknowledge the state who started this project with us as a four grade high
high school, 9 through 12. Mm -hmm. And we talked to them, remember, in our early stages yeah. in 2016, and said, we have a district issue. They said, well, you have one project, a high school. And when we talked to them, we said, well, can we bring eighth grade in? Right. Yes, mm -hmm. as long as it's one project. And seven, so that's how, and the funding from the state increased when we did that. That's correct. So with one project, we were able to uh, leverage the funding from the grant to cover that same percentage of this larger project that sells the full district. So it, it, I have it, to thank the state for, for uh, and we were, we're not alone. Others, other districts have done that, but you know, they opened our eyes to the opportunity right. and it really was, it was fantastic. For the, for the, when you look at surrounding towns who have spent the same amount of money on a brand new high school, we have and not solved their elementary and middle school problem. We have spent back, the yeah. same amount of money and solved our elementary and middle school problem in Belmont. So it going was going through the process once with the state, the which is a cumbersome state, process. And, uh, and they were the great about the funding. They were great about the flexibility of how this would work. And uh, Bill and the design team and Pat Bruce have done an excellent job of uh, making sure that all of this planning uh, and design has now come into fruition with this building. And every time I walk into the high school side and in here today, uh, I really think of all the feedback that we got in those seven long visioning days where the community came in, students came in and educators said, I really want this kind of space for the library. Well, here we are in that for the middle school. I really want this space, I want the cafeteria to have a careful separation, but also a thoughtful planning of how we can make that a community space during the day or at night. And all of those things that's, that folks wanted um, have actually come to fruition. And uh, I, I think the town's very fortunate to have that. That foresight. And I, I remember when you're talking about the visioning that we did what seems like a lifetime ago, mm -hmm. um, one of the things that I think is interesting with this project is that, yes, we are um, addressing the challenges of the numbers, right, yeah. in terms of the district-wide challenges, but I think also one of the things that we had discussed from a visioning perspective is the appropriateness of age mm -hmm. groupings, and I think that that's something that there was a lot of research that was done on, on your end, and that this really makes a, the most sense to have sort of the fourth, fifth, and sixth graders together, and that that's developmentally. So when when does uh, any town or school district get to flatten the curve and build up a whole district and get all the grades just right? Mm. So is it more appropriate for a fifth grade student to be with an eighth grade student, or a fifth grade student to be with a fourth grade student? So we literally did that exercise where we drew a continuum of grade K, one, two, three, all the way to 12, and the community put lines where they thought right. the students had the most in common, and the educators put lines where they felt the educational learning was appropriate, age developmentally appropriate. And we came up with K to three because those learners all have literacy in mind and math concepts in mind. Four, five, six is an upper elementary that will keep the children younger. Those fifth graders really need to be with six and four. They don't need to be with seven and eight. Mm -hmm. And then those seventh and eighth graders together in this building with nine through 12, but having their own space really is the best combination of how we can group those students and give them access. And so the, all that's left for the district to do is have thoughtful transitions to make sure our third grader is ready to go into that fourth grade space and our sixth grader is ready to go into that seventh grade space. That's only two transitions for our young people. Mm. And so that alone uh, has such a great academic student outcome value, social, emotional, rest and well-being value uh, for all of our children. So the design of this configuration is very, very thoughtful. It's been with research and it's been with the feedback of the community and it's, it's actually the best part about the district. Yeah. So it we is, have a win-win. It is we fabulous, and, absolutely. And, uh, we have the financing from the state, um, thanks to the Belmont taxpayers, we're standing one year away from completion, on time, on budget, and uh, we're, we're uh, very eager to see this uh, complete this year. I think the public has seen it. We have uh, this week, the intergenerational path is opening for people out to, the final path is opening. So lots happening in this next year, people. Lots soon. of good stuff. Thank you for, yes. uh, for allowing us to have this conversation. Absolutely, thank you as well. And thank you to all of our listeners. And we look forward to uh, having you join us again uh, sometime soon to have another conversation about the project. Thank you. Thank you.